Hi, Mari. Congratulations on being VP for The Whale. And don't worry, darling. I know you you have worked with Darren Aronofsky before for so many years, but what was challenging in doing the cinematography for The Whale? And how, how was it working with Darren in this movie? I mean, it was uh, the timing was perfect because we were, we were coming off the shutdown. And before the shutdown, Darren said he wanted to make The Whale, which was based on the Sam Hunter uh, play. And, you know, but he had no plans and we shut down. So everybody was basically trying to figure out what they were going to do. But then um, Darren kept talking about maybe doing The Whale and how it might be a uh, good project to do in the current times because we were contained into one apartment and um, we could <clears throat> sort of isolate it. And we shot it upstate New York in a place called Newburgh. Darren has a house very close to there. And, you know, it was a, we were, you know, we were able to get together and make a film at a time where it just felt like everything was in doubt. But um, so when he told me about it, I was, you know, I jumped at the chance to leave LA because I was stuck there for longer than I've ever been stuck there before. So I wanted to do anything. I would do anything. And um, I had, I was actually on Don't Worry Darling when he called and said he was going to make it. And then it happened pretty quickly after that, after that, after I found out that it was happening, it, it happened very quickly. And uh, the next thing you knew, I was flying uh, literally on the last day of shooting on Don't Worry Darling, I was flying to New York. So, so and they're so different, the two films. Um, with, uh, you know, and Darren was just, I think everybody was appreciative that we had something to do. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and uh, I know Brendan Fraser said in the press conference that Maddie can put a light anywhere. I learned inside of a small room and tell the story of the emotional reality that's happening in that room. Can you please comment on that and how was it, you know, filming in a small room with little light? Well, I mean, uh, of course, when somebody says nice things about you, it's a very nice thing to hear. And um, and I appreciate Brendan as much as he appreciates me, if not more. But uh, I honestly, it's I don't think about it too much. Like I do my job. Um, and I, I the, the older I've gotten, the more I realize, like, okay, I could, I could talk about every motivation for me, but it's just, it's like giving partial, uh, partial meal to someone and not feeding them because I don't, there's so many things, choices that go into it, but really I'm just, I'm motivated by uh, the film, the look of it and the camera. It's just like, you know, on one hand we were, we were sort of given the task of, of translating something theatrical into cinema. But at the same time, we didn't want to stand in front of the movie because the movie was Charlie and the, fil and the film was Brennan and his story and the story of the other characters. And um, cinematography really had to take a cinematography and, and everything really had to take kind of a more um, quiet uh, place in the, the situation. So that I think that's just, you know, what was my goal really is to be as quiet as possible um, and disappear. And uh, Hong Chao mentioned that it was also tough working in freezing temperatures in upstate New York in small <laughs> intimate film with a small cast. So talk about that and the challenges of filming in the freezing temperature and working with a small cast. Well, she 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 had the one scene that was outside, you know, and uh, that was um, the only time he ever saw the outside world was in uh, the very beginning when Thomas uh, arrives into the world on a bus. And then the only other time is when Thomas is being spoken to by Hong's character, Liz. And um, yeah, it was cold. It was uncomfortable. But I think it was just us not being used to being outside <laughs> because we'd been inside for, you know, three, four weeks. But I, you know, it wasn't a challenge actually. <laughs> it wasn't a challenge to everyday filmmaking because we shot on a set. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is your first time to work with Olivia Wilde in a feature film. How was it working with her for Don't Worry Darling? And what was the most challenging thing for you doing the cinematography for this film? I mean, I had the best time working with Olivia. I think Olivia has so much to offer as a filmmaker and she's growing from, you know, I, from one project to another, her growth is tremendous and she's got fantastic ideas and she just has this way of motivating the collaborators that she she's working with and inspiring them. So she inspired me, you know, and uh, 
and it was inspiring to the crew and the, the crew directly uh, working with me, you know, I think as a, <clears throat> as a team, we couldn't be happier working with Olivia. Just, she would always challenge us in the most interesting cinema, cinema um, in a cinematic way. So I, you know, she just has a great aesthetic, you know, and it changes from movie to movie, moment to moment. It's not like you can, uh, I don't think you could pigeonhole Olivia and what she's going to do. I think she's going to do great things as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, but uh, I hope it's not the last one I do. How was it collaborating with Olivia? Because she's also the actor in the film. So how was it collaborating with an actor director? I mean, I'd done it many times before, so it wasn't anything different, really. I, I, did, I, and I guess I could speak more generally about it because I have done it before. It wasn't my first time. I, I think it's you know you pay attention to you just there's things that you have to do. They they they're in command of their craft of um, you know acting to the degree where they um, they do things that you know regular people just don't understand. You know how they prepare. And how they go in and out of a character while they're working with other people who aren't in character, I think, is is a tremendous feat. Um, but you just have to be, I think you have to be ultra sensitive when you're working with it. Just be kind of tuned to what they need at the time. Any director, actor, because there's so many things going on in their head. It's good for you to kind of know what's going on in their head. You know, are they concerned about where the shots are? Are they concerned about the performance? Are they concerned about time? The, the more you can be in tune with the person um, and what they're thinking about at that given time, I think that becomes a cohesive relationship. The minute where you're, too, you're thinking about different things, it's amplified. You know, if it's, if it's just a normal director, uh, actor, I mean, director, cinematographer relationship, you know, you could, you could sort of, uh, because there's no other, besides maybe the producing of the movie and the performances, you could sort of get the, you know, there's no other distraction. But when somebody's actually acting in the film, you have to give them that space and then just be there when they're ready to return as a director so that, you know, um, there's no confusion and you're still being creative. And Don't Worry Darling also got praises for the cinematography and visual style. So how was it filming for such a visually vibrant film and shooting at the Kaufman House in Palm Springs? Well, I feel very lucky because, <clears throat> you know, not every there's not that many opportunities to really excel visually i mean you you can force your hand and try to make something visual but this had so many elements that were i didn't have to do a lot i, I put that you know put it that way i mean the design of it was so well done and crafted and the costumes were so well and crafted the hair and makeup i mean i give a tremendous amount of credit to my collaborators in that regard because i had to you know it was probably better to know when to do less you know because there's so much to see and the beautiful you know beautiful people that i had in front of the camera and, and the beautiful setting in palm springs and the kaufman house like you you said i mean um it was it was just like a a, a joy to compose and a joy to light and uh so and then you know you're doing something that ha has the freedom because it's got the it's got that element of um science fiction and a little bit of um you know um thriller aspect to it you could actually you could actually uh, create so it was a, it was a wonderful experience i mean and um, but i know that not every experience like that <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how was it working with the cast harry styles chris pine Gemma chan florence pew and kiki lane well, you know, you say Kiki Lane. I love Kiki Lane. I mean, I worked with her on Native Son. <clears throat> I find her to be a tremendous actress and everything she's done always impresses me. And I'm always like, love watching her. And Florence is incredible. I mean, I can't say enough about it. She's really, <clears throat> we're going to be familiar with Florence Pugh for a long, long time. She's a tremendous actress and just a wonderful spirit. And the whole cast, Harry was fantastic. I mean, he's probably the, I'm not lying and I'm not exaggerating probably the coolest person I've ever met in my life. I mean, he's just, he just has it, you know, um, more it than anybody's allowed to have, you know, but he's, uh, he's tremendous and he's talented. And I think whatever he want, puts his mind to, he can do, and he's going to do it really, really well. So, um, but Gemma Chan, I mean, you know, what a gorgeous and talented actress she is. And um, she glows. Chris Pine's incredible. Like he just uh, he he embodied the character, 
more so than I ever would have expected. And, uh, and I think he added to, I mean, he's just, just skilled person as well. And so good looking that it's just, it's like, he's, a good, he's magnetic on camera. Olivia's Olivia. She's, she's fantastic. You know, you can see, I mean, at least I can see in the movie, her orchestrating the, the pace and the cadence of performance while being inside it, I think is impressive. And, and I think she could do more and more of that. Um, if she chooses to. And um, I mean, it was a wonderful cast. I felt very fortunate. I've, you know, I've, I've been fortunate my whole career working with great actors and it's fun. It's really fun to have a front row seat to them. And this was one of those cases where it was like, you know, actually the both, both the last films, I mean, watching uh, Brendan Fraser, Sadie Singh and Hong Chao. Wow. You know, and uh, just, I, you know, you, you, I think it's important to stop and smell the roses to an extent you know, luckily, it's, I, I've gotten to a place in my career where I can do that and I can watch and be up, really appreciate what these people are doing. So I feel appreciative. But... Uh, do you also see yourself working with some Filipino directors? And can you please mention some that you would love to collaborate with? I mean, I think uh, I'm friends with Raya Martin and I'd love to work with him at some point. Um, I mean, it would be really interesting to work with Lav, Lav Diaz. Uh, but yeah, I see myself doing it. I mean, there's so many, like this, this career, this path, this journey is one that you just, you know, I think it's important to explore and not get caught up into the business of it. <clears throat> and I think what's interesting to me about cinema at this point <clears throat> is, um, is its power in the war on the world stage, you know, uh, going to film festivals and meeting filmmakers from other countries and seeing what stories they're telling. It's, it's interesting to see the commonalities in them. And, um, you know, through its politics, through its humanism. But then it's also interesting because, you you know, culturally, they're so different. So working with, um, you know, and because uh, because it's just been, it's been a long road as a Filipino-American. I, I feel like I, you know, at some point um, want to help tell stories from my culture. It just doesn't necessarily have to be Filipino-American. It could actually be Filipino in general. So I'm open to anything. And so what are your next projects that are coming up? Um, I'm working on a film now that um, I'm finishing up in a couple of weeks. And um, after that, I'm um, I am just reading things. I don't have anything. I'm not going on to anything um, uh, at the moment. Mm -hmm. And your next trip to the Philippines, when is it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't plan that far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Mari.